Sutra. Ananda, consider, for example, a person who touches his warm hand with his cold hand. If the cold is in excess of the warmth, the warm hand will become cold. If the warmth is in excess of the cold, his cold hand will become warm. So the sensation of warmth and cold is felt through the contact and separation of the two hands. Fatiguing contact results in the interpenetration of warmth and cold. However, both the body and the fatigue originate in body. Protraction produces the characteristic of fatigue. Commentary Ananda consider, for example, a person who touches his warm hand with his cold hand. If the cold is in excess of the warmth, the cold is more powerful. His warm hand will become cold. The warm hand will be cold too. If the warmth is in excess of the cold, his cold hand will become warm. The cold hand will turn warm. So the sensation of warmth and cold is felt through the contact and separation of the two hands. The contact of the cold and warm hands involves an awareness of union. The knowledge of contact and the separation, which is called lack of contact, are manifested. Fatiguing contact results in the interpenetration of warmth and cold. If the characteristics of cold and warmth are brought about, it is because of fatigue, which results, in, uh, results from the contact of the two hands. The body and the fatigue originate in body. The body and the awareness of touch are both body. Protection produces the characteristic of fatigue. This is a case of projection within the true nature of body giving rise to the characteristic of fatigue. Sutra, because a physical sensation is stimulated in the midst of the two defiling objects of separation and union, defiling appearances are taken in. This is called the awareness of sensation apart from the two sets of defiling objects of separation and union and pleasantness and unpleasantness. The awareness of, of sensation is originally without a substance. Commentary Because a physical sensation is stimulated in the midst of the two defiling objects of separation and union, defiling appearances are taken in. This is called the awareness of sensation. Because there is a separation and union, these two kinds of sensations of contact, these two kinds of forms, defining objects, a feeling arises within them, and the body's two hands join the feeling of these defining appearances, the separation and the union. Apart from the two sets of defining objects of separation and union and Pleasantness and unpleasantness, the awareness of sensation is originally without a substance. Unpleasant refers to a state of suffering. Pleasant refers to a state of bliss. That which one likes is a state of bliss. That which one dislikes is a state of suffering. So apart from the two defining objects of separation and union, the sensation of contact hasn't any fundamental substance either. It hasn't a substance of its own. Sutra, thus Ananda, you should know that this sensation does not come from separation and union, nor does it exist because of pleasantness and unpleasantness, nor does it arise from the sense organ, nor is it produced from emptiness. Commentary, thus Ananda, from this you should know that this kind of nature of sensation does not come from separation and union. Although it is said that it senses the, the existence of the defining objects of separation and union, the nature that is aware of sensation itself does not come from separation and union, nor does it exist because of pleasantness and unpleasantness, nor does it arise from the sense organ, nor is it produced from the body, nor is it produced from emptiness, nor is it brought forth from emptiness. 
sutra for what reason? If it arose when there was union, it would disappear when there was separation. So how could it sense the separation? The two characteristics of pleasantness and unpleasantness are the same way. Commentary, for what reason? What is the principle? If it arose when there was union, if it were because of union, that one had the nature that is aware of sensation, it would disappear when there was separation. When the palms separated, there would no longer be a nature that was aware of sensation, yet the nature is still there. So how could it sense the separation? If it were extinguished when there was a separation, how could you still sense the separation? The two characteristics of pleasantness and unpleasantness are the same way. States of suffering and states of bliss follow the same principle. Sutra. Suppose it came from the sense organ, which is obviously devoid of the four characteristics of union, separation, pleasantness, and unpleasantness. Unawareness of physical sensations such as this would have no self-nature. Commentary. Suppose it came from the sense organ. If you want to say that the awareness of contact comes from the body, which is obviously devoid of the four characteristics of union, separation, pleasantness, and unpleasantness, how is it shown that sensation is not produced from the body? If it were, the body would have no way to be aware of union, of separation, of what is disagreeable, or of what is agreeable. Unawareness of physical sensations such as this. Your awareness of yourself would have no self-nature. The nature that is aware of sensation would not have a self-nature either. Sutra, suppose it came from emptiness. The awareness of sensation would be experienced by emptiness itself. What connection would that have with your engines? Commentary. Suppose it came from emptiness. If you then say that this nature that is aware of sensation is produced from within emptiness, the awareness of sensations would be experienced by emptiness itself. What connection would that have with your engines? You would have no connection with your body engines. Since all these various propositions are not possible, what conclusion is to be drawn? Sutra, therefore, you should know that the body engines is empty and false since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for existence, nor is it spontaneous in nature. Commentary, therefore, you should know that the body engines is empty and false because of that, you, Ananda, should know that the realm of the body engines is also an empty falseness, since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for resistance, nor is spontaneous in nature. It is also produced from within the wonderful nature of Bodhi. Sutra Ananda, consider, for example, a person who be comes so fatigued that he goes to sleep. Having slept soundly, he awakens and tries to recollect what he experienced while asleep. He recalls some things and forgets others. Thus, his upside downness goes through production, drowning, change, and extinction, which are taken in and returned to a center habitually, each following the next without ever being overtaken. This is known as the mind, organ, or intellect. The mind and the fatigue are both body. Persistence produces a characteristic of fatigue. Commentary Ananda consider, for example, a person who becomes so fatigued that he goes to sleep. He is too tired and wants to sleep. Having slept soundly, he awakens and tries to recollect what he experienced while asleep. He recalls some things and forgets others. When he wakes up, he sees the defining objects before him and he will be able to think about some of the experiences he encountered and unable to think about others because he has forgotten them. Thus, his upside-down needs 
this is upside down is in the mental process and in a are the four aspects of production dwelling change and extinction take sleeping for example thinking about going to sleep is production after all sleeping is dwelling on the verge of waking from sleep is a state of change having awakened and not wishing to sleep anymore is the extinction of sleep so within sleeping itself there is production dwelling change and extinction there is also production dwelling change and extinction in people's thoughts first thinking of something is production Jelling is you're actually thinking about your pursuing the false thought you struck up. Change is when you finish thinking about it. Extinction is when you are no longer thinking of it. Just within one thought, there are the four divisions. The Buddha drama is inexhaustible and unending. Once you look into it deeply, take a telephone call, for example, production is the phone ringing, dwelling is when you are talking on the phone, change is when you are about to complete the call, and extinction is when you have finished speaking. There is production, dwelling, change, and extinction to everything, no matter what it is. There is production, dwelling, change, and extinction in the human lifespan as well. Once birth is production, one has a period of dwelling in the world, Sickness is change and death is extinction, but does a person return to emptiness after one process of production, dwelling, change, and extinction? No, there is still the production, dwelling, change, and extinction of future lives. In the future life, the environment changes, but there is still production, dwelling, change, and extinction. So, production, dwelling, change, and extinction is a very important concept within Buddhism. Absolutely, anything can be used to illustrate the principle. This table is another example when this piece of wood has growing it was sealed with a destiny to become this table. That is production. Dwelling is when it was made into a table. It will not always remain as it is now and after a long period of use it will fall apart and that is change. Once it falls apart it cannot be used any longer so it is burned and that is extinction. Walls also undergo production, dwelling, change and extinction. A wound takes a long time to undergo production. It takes 20 small compass to produce a wound. It dwells for 20 small, small compass, it undergoes destruction for 20 small compass, and it is empty for 20 small compass, that is production, dwelling, destruction, and emptiness, which is the same as production, dwelling, change, and extinction. How many, how many years is a compass? It is 139,600 years. A thousand compass is counted as one small compass. Twenty small compass counted as one medium compass. Four medium compass make one great compass. Production, dwelling, destruction, and emptiness take a great compass. Our knowledge of history reaches back for only a few thousand years, not even the extent of a single compass. The reach of our knowledge is very small. Compass to have production, dwelling, destruction, and emptiness. Production, dwelling, change, and extinction. Taken in and returned to a center habitually. The mind takes in the defiling appearances of production, dwelling, change, and extinction. In this case, during sleep, these appearances return to the organ of the human, human mind, which following the next without ever being overtaken. The production, dwelling, change, and extinction of thoughts in the mind are like a waves on water. This is known as a mind organ or intellect of the six organs of the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. The mind is now being discussed. The mind and the fatigue originate in body. Persistence produces the characteristic of fatigue. This is also a perseverance, 
within the true nature of body, which produces the characteristic of fatigue. Sutra. The two defiling objects of production and extinction stimulate the sense of knowing, which in turn grasps its inner sense data, reversing the flow of seeing and hearing. Before the flow reaches the ground, it is known as the faculty of intellect. Commentary. The two defining objects of production and extinction stimulate a sense of knowing. The defining objects of the mind lie within the mind. The mind conditions dramas which are subject to production and extinction. There are also dramas which are not subject to production and extinction. But the dramas conditioned by the mind are dramas of production and extinction which are defining objects. The nature of aware knowing accumulates and dwells in their midst, and in turn grasps these inner sense data. Grasps here means the same as taking in mentioned above. Reversing the flow of seeing and hearing, the defiling objects of seeing and hearing revert to the sixth mind consciousness. Before the flow reaches the ground, before this reversing current has reached the eighth mind consciousness, it is known as a faculty of intellect. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, bodily sensation, and knowing the sixth of these consciousnesses is the knowing awareness nature of in the organ of the mind. Before the flow reaches the ground, can also refer to the reverting current flowing back into the mind. What is the reverting current? When the mind's thought con conditions dharmas, it is as if there is a current which flows back into the mind. Before the flow reaches the eighth consciousness, there is a nature of aware knowing in the sixth mind consciousness. Sutra, apart from the two sets of defining objects of waking and sleeping and of production and extinction, the faculty of intellect is originally without substance. Commentary, apart from the two sets of defining objects of waking and sleeping, of being asleep and of being awake, and of production and extinction, and of the two defining objects of production and extinction, the faculty of intellect is originally without substance. It too does not have a substantial nature. Sutra, thus Ananda, you should know that the faculty of intellect does not come from waking, sleeping, production, or extinction, nor does it arise from the sense organ, nor is it produced from emptiness. Commentary First, Ananda, from the doctrine which has been explained, Ananda, you should know that the faculty of intellect, the nature of aware, knowing, does not come from waking, sleeping, production, or extinction, nor does it arise from the sense organ, nor does it come out of the organ of the mind, nor is it produced from emptiness, nor is it produced from within emptiness. Sutra, for what reason, if it came from waking, it would disappear at the time of sleeping. So how could it experience sleep? If it came from production, it would cease to exist at the time of extinction. So how could it undergo extinction? If it came from extinction, it would disappear at the time of production. So how could it know about production? Commentary. For what reason? If it came from waking, if the nature of aware knowing arose when one's were, one was awake, it would disappear at the time of sleeping. It would disappear when one is asleep. And how could it experience sleep if it weren't there? When one was asleep, what would be meant by sleep? If it came from production, it would cease to exist at the time of extinction. When there was extinction, it would be gone. So how could it undergo extinction? Who is it who would undergo extinction? If it came from extinction, it would disappear at the time of production. So how could it know about production? In that case, it would cease to be when there was production, without the nature of aware knowing, who would know there was production? Sutra, suppose it came from the sense organ. 
waking and sleeping cause only a physical opening and closing respectively apart from these two movements the faculty of intellect is as unsubstantial as flowers in space because it is fundamentally without the self nature commentary suppose it came from the sense organ if you say it comes from the organ of the mind then waking and sleeping these two characteristics cause only a physical opening and closing respectively there is an opening and closing in accord with your own body apart from these two movements of wakefulness and sleep the faculty of intellect is as unsubstantial as flowers in space because it is fundamentally without the self nature apart from the opening and closing it is the same as non-existence non-existent it has no self nature sutra suppose it came from emptiness the sense of intellect would be experienced by emptiness instead of by the mind then what connection would that have with your engines commentary suppose it came from emptiness if it were emptiness that produced the nature of aware knowing the sense of intellect would be experienced by emptiness instead of by the mind if it were emptiness itself that knew then what connection would that have with your engines what connection would that have with you sutra therefore you should know that the mind entrance is empty and false since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for this existence nor is spontaneous in nature commentary therefore you should know that the mind entrance is empty and false the mind entrance is also an empty falseness since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for existence it is not produced from causes and conditions nor is it spontaneous in nature ultimately then why do you have a nature of aware knowing it is produced from a persistence within the nature of the wonderful true suchness of the treasury of the first come one which gives rise to the characteristic of fatigue